Howdy folks, today we are going to explore a question that someone asked me the other day, which is, how do I handle API pagination? And by that they meant, how do they display the results of an API in a paginated view so that you could click next or previous buttons and get new data. So there's two things, kind of different ways to go about this, and it kind of depends on how the API is actually set up. So some APIs actually have pagination built into them. Um, those can actually be a lot easier to work with because you just use the API parameters and tweak them and your code doesn't have to actually change that much. Some APIs do not have any pagination built into them. It's a little rare, but it does happen. Or you're calling them in such a way that the pagination doesn't really make a lot of sense. Let's take a look. The sample I have here, um, we have basically a very simple document. It has a holder for stuff and the script. Over here is the script. We have our holder, which we're getting at here, the base API, and that function to get the data. So in this one, we're just calling our API, v1 API, getting the JSON response, then getting our data, clearing our holder, looping over all the responses, fetching the name out of the object, creating a holder for it, putting that onto the page. So that turns out with this list. Okay, and if I look at the response here, you can see it's just basically a list of 12 objects. No pagination at all. It'd be nice if I could paginate these, right? One through maybe pages of five, for instance. Now, one way to do that is to make it so that you only display five, for instance. So what I could do is I could say, okay, page equals zero, all right, and then per page equals five. And then as soon as I get my data, instead of looping over all the responses, I'm also gonna say here, okay, if i is greater than per page, then just break. We're done with the loop. What that's gonna do is that's gonna stop after we get past five. And now we have six. So I need to go one further. I need to actually say less than or equal to per page. There we go. So now we only have five. Where's the rest of them? Well, it would be nice to get the rest of them. Um, so I want to also include a couple buttons in here to go next and previous. So I've gone ahead and add those buttons in here. Previous button, next button. They show up on the page like this. Uh, so we click previous, we want to go back a page, we click next, we want to go forward a page, all right? So let's add them in here. Next button. So now when these are clicked, we're basically going to change this page and then we're going to actually call get data again because right now we need to regenerate the whole thing. So down here, next button, add event listener, click. And then all we're gonna do here is we're gonna say page plus plus and then get data. Now we'll get a new page. Even though the API is still returning us the same page data, we're gonna only show a chunk of it. So I go next and you can see it's calling it again. It's not doing anything different though. That's because we haven't actually taken the page into account here. So I want to start out with our min is going to be page times per page. This is the, the starting point we want to be at. For page zero, it's going to be zero. For page one, it's going to be five. For page two, it's going to be 10. Then we want our max. And that's just going to be the min plus per page. One extra page. Then we're going to loop from min to and I don't want to do max here necessarily because max might go off the end of the array. So instead, I'm going to say math.min data.length max. And that might be a little unintuitive because you're saying, why am I putting max into math.min? But look at it this way. If data.length is 12 and max is 15, I don't want to go over the edge, the end of the loop or the end of the array. So I want to stop at 12. On the other hand, max is five. I don't want to go to 12, I want to go to 5. In either case, I want to go to the smaller of those two numbers, and that's what math.min does. Okay, so now I load this, and I go next. 
Now it just goes to art history, Spanish, etc. And now the reason for that is because my loop here oops, is still working wrong. So now we want to make sure if i is greater than max to break. Though actually we don't need to do this anymore because we're already looping over the appropriate stuff there. Because now we're only going to the max. Okay. There we go. And you can see we go off the end. Now previous doesn't work. That would be pretty easy too. I'm just going to copy this. And it's the same thing. Minus minus. Next. Previous. Next. Next. Previous, previous. This is a little wasteful and that's calling the API every single time. Um, something you could do to improve upon that is you actually could store all this data. So instead of um, generating it here, you make another function. Generate a page or generate list. And you'd actually just take this whole thing, pop that in there. But this needs to go off of data, right? Um, API response. We're going to set this to an empty array just in case. The reason I set to an empty array instead of null is just in case generate list gets called before get data gets called somehow. Then at least it's not going to completely explode. Now I say, okay, API response equals data, and then I call generate list. The reason I'm doing this is now I'm I'm kind of saving the API data since I don't think that's going to change too much as the user's clicking buttons. I can save it ahead of time and then have all the list generation here and not have to recall it. So this is going to be API response and this is going to be API response instead of data. Now when I go in here, I can go next and previous. You can see this oh, it's still calling v1, but that's because this actually needs to be generate list as well. There we go. Now you can see it's going back and forth but not calling the API again. So very very different thing. The main thing that we did to make that happen no, is we took all the generation code and put it in its own function. Kind of made it so it handled, it worked on a global variable. And then the only thing the API has to do is when you call it, you set that global variable, generate the list. That means that you can call this generation code again and again and again with our next and previous buttons and it never calls the API again. All right, so let's take a look at the second kind of API. This is much more common. This is an API and you notice I've, basically this is the same code. I've just kind of reverted it to what we had before we broke it out into a function. The second kind of API actually has its own pagination built in. So we're now using v2. If I go here, you can see it's only giving me five. Well, that's because most APIs that are paginated by default have some pagination. In this case, by default, this API gives you the first page of five. If an API gives you pagination, you want to make use of that for a couple reasons. One, because pagination APIs are much less effort. Let's say that there's a thousand items in a list and you want to show the user five at a time, the user's probably not going to go through all thousand items, which means it's cheaper on both the server and the client if you only fetch them a thousand at a time. So in this particular case, rather than fetching a thousand, I'm fetching five, which is much easier on the database of the server I'm hitting. It's also much easier on my client because I only have to pull five items at a time and I may never get the whole thousand. Of course, if a user does see the whole thousand, you're actually going to end up spending more resources, but that's less likely. So this one takes a couple parameters. I happen to know what they are ahead of time, but basically the API for this looks like page and page count equals total on page. So it's a simple API that takes in two parameters, the page, which would be the current page that you're on, and then the page count, which is how many you want per page, which we already have variables for. So for example, if I put page equals two, then it gives me the second page. And you notice this is actually broken because it's going over max and min still. Let's take that out because now the data itself already knows where it's supposed to go to. 
So this one, you can see, we don't do any of that strange stuff. We just display the whole data set because the whole data set knows what's supposed to be in there. I'm not completely sure why it's still breaking. Must be something else with it. So, page two, but if I put in my actual page, okay, then this will actually obey that. And you can see now that parameter is in there as well. This is happening because for some reason it's still running over um, too many of them, and I'm not completely sure why. Uh, but you can see now we've got that individual page in there, and each one of these returns. Oh, that's why. It's giving me null. So the API is giving me bad data. You, you want to check this. And in this case, when I built the API, I was in kind of a hurry when I built it. But definitely check your data. But you can see, in this case, it's giving you the appropriate pages. And now it's the back end making that work. So if people give you paginated APIs, you should definitely use that. You notice I didn't actually put in the page count. A lot of time, paginated APIs have defaults for page count. And I happen, it was five. That happens to work for me. If I want it to be three, for instance, I could put that in there. And page count equals per page. Now I get three at a time. And they won't always say page and page count. Sometimes they'll have various different things. Sometimes APIs will even return to you the URL that you need to use to get the next page. If that's the case, definitely use it because they will have optimized that URL for your specific query. Anyway, that's the two ways of doing it. Um, just to go over them again. The first way is getting your data and saving it, backing it up somewhere, which can be kind of expensive. It's a large data set. And then having another function that does the generation and picks slices of that data to show on the page. Um, and then your click functions just move back and forth on that slice. You don't need to go to the server multiple times to generate which could be what could be an expensive data set. Um, this sort of thing can also work if you only have a certain number of API calls. The other thing you can do is you can show all of just put all the items on the page and hide and show them based on a data attribute. That's that will work. Um, it just dumps a lot more stuff into your browser. So this is kind of per, more preferred because it's a little bit more elegant, but either way is fine. The second way, if you have an API that accepts pagination is make use of that pagination and then just call the API again every single time you need to change your page because that's what that's why the API is pagination. It's kind of designed to work that way. Anyway, I hope this is helpful, and I'll see you all next time.